and uh, I'm going to take you through wine service at Elmhurst Resort. Helping me out today, I've got Janelle and Andrew from our, uh, from our service team. Uh, there's a couple of tools that come in handy uh, before you get started. First of all, you need a corkscrew with an auger and, uh, and a claw and, uh, and a knife for removing the foil. And you should always be prepared with a napkin. Uh, you ring in your wine order and pick it up at the Wild Blue Yonder, or you might have to get it from the uh, wine cabinet in the dining room. So when you pick up the wine, you just give the bottle a quick visual inspection, make sure it's not dusty or has anything spilled on it or, or all kinds of fingerprints. You might just have to give it a little bit of a, a, little bit of a polish. And you should always carry the wine bottle with the label facing out. So when it comes time to uh, present the wine at the table, you go directly to the person that ordered the wine. Let's say, in this case, Janelle ordered the wine. Um, nowadays, ladies are just as, just as likely to make wine decisions as, uh, as the men are, so uh, we'll present this bottle to, uh, to Janelle. So like I said, the label should always face out. And I would approach the guests from the right side and show them the label like so. They'll indicate that, yes, that is the, indeed the wine I ordered. And from there, sometimes people get a little bit stressed out. They say, I gotta get the foil off this bottle, I gotta get my corkscrew ready, I gotta yank the cork out of it, and, and that's kind of awkward. You need three hands to do that. It's perfectly okay to set the wine down. You just set it down so that the label is facing the guest, and then you get your, uh, get your corkscrew ready. You're gonna need the knife, make a quick cut around the lip at the top of the bottle and remove the foil and then you take out the auger put it right in the middle of the cork and you put the auger pretty much all the way in now most good corkscrews nowadays have two stages there's uh, there's one uh, there's one short claw here and then a longer one to get the get it out the rest of the way. You get the, you get the cork almost all the way out and then you just kind of gently wiggle it out. You want to be careful you don't rip it out so it makes it pop. And then you set the wine back down again. I take the cork off the auger and I leave it here for the guests to inspect. Now I take my, uh, my napkin and I just give a little wipe around the, uh, around the neck of the bottle. And then you pour a small sample, about one and a half to two ounces, for the guests to try. Now when you pour the wine, you should pour the wine from the right hand side with your right hand as much as you can. Now if Andrew was tasting the wine, it's kind of hard to do that because I can't reach the glass without pretty much hugging it. So I can serve the wine from the left. I just switch the wine bottle to my right hand. So I pour from the left with the left. You never pour from the left with your right hand because that's rude. So going back to uh, the sample that we've just poured, Janelle can smell the wine, give it a taste, and she'll let me know if it's okay or not. I just stand back here and patiently wait with the wine, wine label facing out until uh, Janelle says it's fine. Perfect. Great. <laughs> so now I go around and pour wine for the rest of the guests. Now, if there was more guests at this table, I would pour wine for the ladies first. Now I'm gonna pour Andrew his wine. And usually um, a three to four ounce pour is lots. You don't want to be a, at a table of eight people and they've ordered a bottle of wine and you run out of wine on glass number seven. It's a good idea to maybe practice with one of these bottles and some water um, and see how many, how many uh, glasses each uh, uh, a bottle will fill. So now the, uh, the wine's been presented and um, everyone has, has a glass. And uh, so this, this, uh, this wine is done. So you just leave the bottle uh, on the table and go on with the rest of your duties. 
so we're back with Janelle and Andrew uh, for a few more secrets to wine success. Um, this bottle shape is the Bordeaux bottle shape. So red wines in this bottle shape, generally you need to put them in a decanter. Um, it uh, gets more oxygen in the wine and it makes the wine smell better and taste better a lot faster. Um, we're also going to cover opening wine bottles that have a screw cap on them. More and more wines come with a screw cap on them and so, uh, so we're going to cover that as well. So the tools that you need, obviously a, a wine with a screw cap, you don't need your corkscrew. Uh, the tools that you need for decanting, you need a decanter, uh, and it just takes a brief polish on the outside of the decanter to get it ready to go. You need a filter, and you need a little side plate or a saucer to catch the drips from the, from the filter. So, um, we'll say this time that Andrew um, ordered the wine, um, present the wine, from this side, we for Andrew to, to give me the word. And then it's just a simple matter of removing the stelvin and, uh, and, and just maybe setting it by the side plate. Um, you want to leave the, the stelvin off the bottle so that the wine can continue to breathe um, in, between, uh, in between glasses. And uh, as I said before, um, Generally, you want to pour from the right side if you can. Kind of awkward for me to do this because of where Andrew's sitting. So I'm going to pour with my, with my, uh, from his left hand side. I'm just going to use my left hand. Now, when I pour the wine, I'm going to gently pour it, and then when I pour it enough, you just give the bottle a little twist, and that keeps the bottle from dripping. Pour it gently, and a little twist. Very nice. Great. So now, I'm going to go back to my decanter. I just put the filter in the decanter and just gently pour the wine through the filter. It's very simple, but it makes the wine smell and taste a lot better, a lot faster, and it's a nice little show for the guests. Now I'm going to leave the bottle on the table once again with the label facing the guests. With wine, the label is very important. You always want the label to be facing the guests. Take out the, uh, the filter, put it, on the, uh, put it on the saucer so I don't get wine drip on the tablecloth. And then I go and pour the wine uh, for the guests. It's the same thing, just pour it gently. And then a little twist to catch the drips. I've still got my napkin with me to keep things tidy. Keep drips to the minimum. Then I leave it at the I leave the decanter. In summertime, it's actually not a bad idea to leave your napkin over top like this because we do our best to keep it to a minimum, but sometimes you get fruit flies or other insects and you don't want those getting into the decanter of the wine. And then you take your filter and your saucer and you move on to your next set of duties. Okay, we're gonna show you uh, the right way to open a bottle of uh, sparkling wine. Now, whenever you're serving a bottle of white wine or a sparkling wine, which is served cold at the table, you should use one of these wine chillers, which you find in the freezer in the Wild Blue Yarn. You've already seen how to carry the, the bottle with a label facing out and how to present it to a guest. So I'm just gonna open the bottle here so you can see the method for opening the bottle in a safe and uh, graceful manner. So, Generally, um, there's going to be a little ribbon that you can peel and remove the foil from the top of the, uh, of the bottle. Now, if it starts to get awkward, there is never any shame in setting the bottle on the table. That is 100% 100% uh, um, okay. Uh, it's much better than fumbling and wrestling with the bottle and uh, dropping things. Now we need to uh, remove 
uh, the wire cage that holds the cork in. Now, the contents of a sparkling wine are under a lot of pressure. So you always kind of treat it like a loaded gun. You never point the neck of the bottle any direction where you don't want the cork to go if it got released by accident. So you'll, you'll see when I handle this bottle, I'm gonna do my best to keep the neck of the bottle pointed at the ceiling. Because uh, if, it, if it goes up and hits the ceiling, it's not gonna hurt anyone. But that is something that you definitely need to keep in mind when you're uh, opening sparkling wines. And you always wanna have your, uh, your napkin uh, close by. So there's a little curly cue that you just untwist to loosen the uh, to loosen the, the wire, and then your napkin goes right over the top, and then you're going to remove the cork by twisting the bottle, not the cork. Always twist the bottle, and if you do it exactly right, when the cork comes out, you should only hear a little hiss. It's not. It's actually not the best way to do it to have a big pop like you hear in the movies. To be really professional, you just want a little hiss. Once again, leave the label facing the guests all the time. Um, checking out the cork and the, uh, and the foil and the, and the wire is, is, is less, less critical uh, with this one. I would just store it. Now, Perfect. It's also perfectly okay to use two hands to pour the wine because the, the, the champagne flute can be quite small. The opening can be quite small and, um, and unless you're really, really steady, um, it's kind of hard to get the wine from this big fat bottle into that tiny little glass without dripping some. So it's perfectly okay to just lean in like that and pour a sample. Don't forget to twist the bottle to catch the drips. And that's presenting uh, sparkling wines. And then I would just leave the, uh, the wine in the wine chiller uh, to stay, stay cool while the guests uh, enjoy their wine and their, and their meal. So do you guys want to say cheers to, uh, to wine success at Elmhurst Resort? Very much so. Cheers. cheers. So I'm currently in the dining room where we keep all of our red wines. This is where we keep our white wines.